Ohio. It is 14-10. The Oilers up on the Browns at halftime. Don Crickey with Beasley Reese. The last time the Oilers won five games in a row was back in 1980. And they'll do it if they win today. But right now, they've got to cut down the turnover count. They're keeping Cleveland in the game with that. <laughs> what, four turnovers already? I mean, these guys are struggling like, like we haven't seen them struggle in the last four games. I mean, they know if they don't turn it over, they can beat just about anybody. Some first-half highlights. There was some good throws by Warren Moon mixed in with some troubled ones as he was picked off twice. This is a good one going to Curtis Duncan. He went up, came down with it. That was the second touchdown of the day. And Todd Philcox has kind of stumbled his way around on this football field today, but here he did make a good throw. The pump fake allowed Eric Metcalf to free himself from Bubba McDowell in the end zone and to come up with the touchdown. As we look now at the Coors Light silver bullet halftime statistics, you see the turnover count in yellow. And the overall yardage, the Cleveland Browns with 204 yards, so they lead the way in overall yardage. But they trail in the game. They've lost four of their last six, have the Browns. Here is a big kickoff by Stover. Boom, high into the end zone. And the Oilers, Willie Drury elects not to bring it out. So it will be first down and 10 for Houston at their 20 yard line. Jack Pardee said before the game, right now our confidence level couldn't be better. The players in this team are pumping each other up, They're feeding off each other's success. The one and four start was met with misery in the Lone Star State. The critics were unanimous, and they were many. John Jones said the one thing that brought us back, he said, was the fact that the core of the team never faltered. We were always together. The critics let them say what they would. They've come back to play outstanding football, but they're having problems with the wind in the Browns' defense today. Boone goes to the draw on first down, and Gary Brown breaks another big run. A running back with a career average of over six yards a carry gets 13. Gary Brown reads blockers extremely well. I mean, if you could, if you wonder the reason for his success, watch this. Nice fake on the counter, and look as he dips in and out, reading blockers, finding the creases, and then securing the ball. Yeah, he's a big guy. When we met with him the other day, he's a wide player. Yeah, very wide person. 86 yards rushing already. So he's having a big day, even against a good defensive line. In his first start last week, he had 166 yards against Cincinnati. There's a throw in the flat. The ball is caught somehow, but off bobbled and almost lost by Curtis Duncan. As Moon in his gusting wind keeps gunning that run and shoot offense with the throws downfield. Warren Moon recognized zone coverage that time. Everybody stopped. Slaughter stopped. Duncan stopped. And Warren Moon able to just choose which one he wanted to go to that time. Moon during the four-game win streak, 10 touchdowns and three interceptions and a 77% completion rate, 70%. Today, he has one touchdown throw and has been picked off twice, as has his counterpart, Todd Philcox, thrown two interceptions. He, too, has a touchdown pass. Big rush. Moon stands in, ducks into the pocket, and gets the ball away. Not close to a receiver. He did well just to get the ball downfield as the Browns were really after him. You can give that one to the defensive backs and to the play of the defensive line. That was a total perfect defensive effort. Take a look at the pressure here. Anthony Pleasant with a good push straight in the guy's face and from the outside. Burnett collapsing in from the other side. Oh, my goodness. And then Pleasant getting a knockout shot on Warren Moon at the end. Good pressure, good play in the secondary. Moon had nowhere to go to. There's Nick Saban. He's working at defense for the... Uh, Cleveland Browns. Dime defense. He's been going with all day long. That's six defensive backs. He's looking to get pressure from his front four. Here's a blitz. Moon makes a throw, and it's ahead for a first down. A third down and five play. And Webster Slaughter comes down with the ball for the first down. Randy Hilliard was the defensive back for the Browns, slipping down on the play. And the Houston Oilers run that uh, little, those little stop patterns as well as anybody in the game. You see, once again, people coming in, showing their face in front of Warren Moon, but he has plenty of time to get the ball out. And the ball is out to the 45-yard line on the completion. Opening drive of the third quarter. Oilers trail 3-0. Then led 14-3 at the moment. They lead 14-10. Moon goes back to the draw. Brown. He 
takes his hole, finds it. Clay Matthews on the tackle. Belichick had an interesting observation that his former head coach, the Giants, Bill Parcells, used to make about running backs. He said, even the great ones, they're all the same if there's no hole there. <laughs> And that's the absolute truth. I mean, if you you plug them up, they all look alike. There are a lot of running backs that have played on little teams with very little notoriety who would be great running backs playing for the Houston Oilers or Cleveland Browns, even somebody with a decent offensive line. Second down and a long seven. Almost eight. Moon stands in, makes the throw, catches made. Going to be a first down for the Houston Oilers at the 44 yard line of Cleveland as again they victimize Selwyn Jones. Now, that this is the situation that the Browns cannot allow Warren Moon to take advantage of. He's in the rhythm. Perfect drop back. Receivers have plenty of time to run their routes. The ball is going to be thrown well when he gets the blocking. He got the blocking that time. So, Kevin Gilbride and his offense in that rhythm right now. They've got to get him out of that rhythm, Don. That rhythm is still around Selwyn Jones going after him, a second-year cornerback from Colorado State. Hand off. Gary Brown holds the ball, drives ahead. He's got a great burst. They say he gets to the hole even faster than Lorenzo White. Does not have the open field elusiveness of White, who went to the Pro Bowl last year with over 1,200 yards rushing. Brown is sneaky elusive. I mean, he does. He's not one of these guys that'll stop and shake and bake, but he will lean and cut and slash. And then, because of the way his body is built, look, he's so low, he'll, he'll bounce off of you, roll, and gain another two yards. Second down comes up. Four yards needed. Boone with a timing throw. Haywood Jeffries comes down with the ball, and that lanky receiver from North Carolina State, a former number one draft choice, tiptoes the sideline enough for a first down. They have been working around the middle of the field, so the Cleveland Browns have been satisfied and playing very soft zones. You see uh, the players going back in the zone principle and then coming up and making the tackle. Now, after about one more game, they'll be forced to blitz or play man for man. They'll have to try to put some pressure on Warren Moon. Yeah, this drive, they haven't gotten it out of him. Of course, that draw run of Brown will keep the pressure off the quarterback. They will now lines up their big front four. Again, the Gary Brown. Man, is he a good back. He goes over 100 yards with that carry early in the third quarter. This guy is a football player, Gary Brown. They found out when Lorenzo White went out, they have two standouts. He really is a good back. I mean, that time he started out to the left and bent the ball, bent the run, all the way back hard to the right, taking him over 100 yards for the day. I mean, that's a super job. And then you have to remember that the offensive line is allowing him to get into that linebacker area and then work in having linebackers and defensive backs to make the tackle on a big man. But the Oilers controlling the ball and the clock. An extended drive, five and a half minutes long already. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Boone takes a look, makes a throw way off target. And as he releases, the rush comes in hard, led by Clay Matthews. Ernest Gibbons was the retended, intended receiver. He's been quiet for most of the day. They've got a, done a good job defending the Pro Bowler 81, Ernest Gibbons. You know, Bruce, there's, there's Clay Matthews, and, and this guy's got all the moves in the world. And look at Clay working against the rookie, Brad Hopkins. And they were worried about Clay Matthews and Brad Hopkins. We were told that in the meetings. And you see why. Clay has got all 16 years worth of moves and experience. He's got them all, and he still can use them all at optimum effect. Hand off Gary Brown on third and short. Takes the pile with him. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. He's ahead for five, and then bowls ahead for a gain of 10 yards on the play. Well, everybody missed him that time. Uh, ball was in there very quickly, as was Michael Ding. Look how quickly uh, Jerry Ball is in there and misses him. Michael Dean misses him, and then everybody else is trying to arm tackle a guy who's huge. I mean, this kid is short and stocky. Very sharp young guy. I mean, he's very open about what it's all about. He said, you don't know in this league. You just have to wait for your chance, and then when you get it, it's up to you to make good. He got his chance two weeks running. Now, here's a throw in the flat, a diving catch. Curtis Duncan with excellent hands. Didn't produce much. A gain of only about two yards. And uh, I give that little, that tiny little gain to, to Warren Moon. 
Uh, Selwyn Jones is in great position. Watch Warren throw the ball back away from Selwyn. Brings the receiver back away from the defender. That's a super catch and a good throw, making sure that the defender doesn't have a chance at the football. And yeah, he's got to be thinking about those defenders with two interceptions already and four overall for his team. It was the seventh catch of the day for Curtis Duncan. One has been for a touchdown. Second and nine, Moon takes a look. Here comes the rush. There's the throw, and it's right at a defender, and it carries off him. Gibbons was the intended receiver, but Stevon Moore, number 27, almost had it. Stevon Moore had perfect position. And you know, it's tough because the players were in motion. And what they looked to do is to pick Stevon Moore and Selwyn uh, Jones uh, off of one another. And you see Moore able to step right on the inside and knock the ball down. Good position. Good play at the right time. So the Browns defense, which was giving up a lot of yards in this opening drive of the second half, now starting to stiffen. Third down, coming up. The Oilers need nine. This is the 13th play of the drive. Moon against the blitz, makes the throw. Webster Slaughter working hard, but he's not close to a first down. Now there's a ball on the field. The Oilers have it, and it's a first down with the ball is position. So this time, the Oilers cough it up, but end up beneficiaries of the play where Webster Slaughter was hit and stopped was short of the first down. You know, it looks like that's either David Williams or Matthews that came up with the ball. That is really a freak play. Well, that's know. a freak play and a great job by the offensive hustling. Now watch David Williams after this ball is fumbled. These offensive linemen have to be coming toward the play to block in order to be in position to get this ball. David Williams, good job. It was Clay Matthews who came from off the plate and knocked it free. The others ended up winning the skirmish, and they now have it first and goal at the six-yard line. Brown, the lone setback. He could get it. They're going to throw. Timing throw. It's to Brown, and it skips off his hands. Well, they got the coverage they were looking for. They were looking for man-for-man -man coverage. They were hoping to get a linebacker, and they did. They got big Mike Johnson covering Brown. He had exactly what he wanted, did Warren Moon, and he's got to be a little upset about this one. A little bit low. Yeah, you can tell. He just, just a little bit low and to the inside. Last week against the Bengals, and you have to take the opponent into consideration, but the Oilers had 240 yards rushing, which was their most in 13 years. Timing throw to the end zone, not close. To the intended receiver, Curtis Duncan. That brings up third down and goal from the six-yard line. Well, there's the combination we've been talking about. Uh, again, Kevin Gilbright didn't like something there. But that's the matchup they've been looking for. Nick Saban had his uh, his cornerback in a man-for-man -man position, Selwyn Jones. And Selwyn did a great job that time of covering Duncan. You talk about an extended drive. This is an extended drive. It's his 17th play. Uh, of this drive coming up. 75-yard drive to this point, but nothing to show for it. Third down and goal coming up for the Oilers. Here comes the blitz. Moon stands in, throws to the end zone. Not close. Moon is decked by Rob Burnett after he releases the ball. Well, the defense is asking for a hand, and they deserve it, too, because... Yeah, they played great when they had you, they at the end. Really good at the end. They, I think it might have been a little too much zone toward the middle uh, of the football field. Take a look at the pressure coming in here on Moon. He had plenty of time, though, but you notice he's not stepping forward and throwing. That happens when you, when throughout the game, you've been getting pressure right in your face. You start throwing the ball flat-footed. Del Greco spins the extra the field goal attempt up but there's also a penalty marker down. It came on a fourth and goal from the six yard line. Here's Ron Blum the referee. False start prior to the snap 72 offense. Five yards repeat fourth down. Brad Hopkins the rookie left tackle. He was the Oilers number one draft choice out of Illinois. He moved a bit early so now it makes it a bit longer field goal attempt. Line of scrimmage is the 10. It'll make it a 17-yard field goal, 27-yard field goal. Greg Montgomery is the holder.
It's hit up and good. Oilers now lead 17-10. Beasley Reese, this is Don Crickey back at Cleveland Stadium on a cold November day. Clear skies, sunny, wind is gusting in though, swirling off the lake. And Al Del Greca, who just hit the 27 yard field goal to help the Oilers build their lead to 17 to 10, kicks off to Randy Baldwin. Big time collision at the 19 yard line, led by John Henry Mills. John Henry Mills. Think of all this as a large block of ice. Think of 1230 Pacific with NFL Live, followed by the Dolphins and the Cowboys. You see Todd Philcox numbers for the day. He's put it up a lot. This is the first time Cleveland's been on the field with its offense in the second half. 642 to play in the third quarter after the extended field goal drive of the Oilers. Cox looking to fire. He does. Carrier had it and lost it. Mark Carrier, a former Tampa Bay Buccaneer who came here as an offseason free agent. Had some great years for Tampa Bay. One year had 1,400 yards in receiving. Carries the inside receiver working against Bubba McDowell, who's in absolute pristine position. <laughs> Maybe you throw that ball away. That sounds like a good place to be, that, <laughs> that, that pristine Absolutely. position. Absolutely. <laughs> That's where you want to be in this world. <laughs> Bubba McDowell, he played for Jimmy Johnson in a national championship team in Miami of Florida. So what was he like? He said, don't make mistakes if you want to play. <laughs> He loved playing for him. He recruited him. Downfield throw and a nice catch coming back at the ball of Carrier and he steps out of bounds. Mark Carrier can be a big time producer, very elusive. Back in 89 was when he had that all pro year with Tampa Bay. Caught 86 passes for over 1,400 yards. Well, this is a good throw. This is a good step and a good throw by Phil Cox. It's a super pattern. And that's Carrier's fifth catch and he's got almost 100 yards. He's got 94 yards already. So. This guy is uh, making his contribution to the football game. Very quick, very fast. Brown signing the number of free agents in the offseason. The Oilers are one of only two NFL teams that stayed away pretty much in the free agent market. And then they got the very big one in Wilbur Marshall. Picked him up, a four-time All-Pro player. Mark Carrier turns out. Again, they get some yards, about five. And while we have a moment, we go back to NFL Live in New York and Jim Lampley. Jim? Well, Don, you know that Buffalo tight end Keith McKellar has been out all season. Here's his first catch of the year, and it comes at an appropriate moment, lengthening the Buffalo lead to 23-9 in the fourth quarter. 13-yard TD throw from Keller to McKellar. They're into the fourth, as I say. 23-9. Back to the Crickmeister in Cleveland. Where we have a very brisk day, but a good one on the shores of Lake Erie. The Cleveland Browns. Digging in, down by seven. The second down coming up in six. Bill Cox goes to Vardell. Terrific play by Wilbur Marshall, who got there first to slow him up, and then Glenn Montgomery finished him off. That brings up third and about four, about three. Vardell has carried the ball 12 times for 48 yards, and boy, I tell you what, this time they are all over him. Wilbur Marshall, look at him sliding down the line on a seek and destroy mission. Stops his forward progress, and then Montgomery brings him down. So. Well, it looks like he twisted something. He's out of the ball game. Leroy Ford steps in in his place, number 33. Third down comes up. Brown struggling on third down. They've converted just two of nine today. They need three. Here comes a blitz. Bill Cox gets it away somehow just before he's hit. Bubba McDowell coming on a safety blitz. So it goes incomplete. You know, that's what he was saying that he loves about this defense. Sometimes he's covering somebody man for man. He showed you that a few minutes ago. Sometimes you know, he's on an all-out blitz like you see right there. That, that's got to be a fun position to play. You could become a star playing that position. Bubba making the 11 count. Checking to be sure we got all 11 out here on the kick return team. And especially not having 12 out there. You can play with 10 or 9 or whatever you want. Not with 12. Ball hit downfield. Hanson really moves a punt and it carries into the end zone. 
that up in the jet stream. And it carries all the way down, 58 yards, but into the end zone, 38 net. Oilers have it when we come back. Hi, Super Dave Osborne here, getting ready to roll across the country, singing the praises of these great-looking Hager wrinkle-free cotton pants. You know the ones, 100% cotton, wrinkle-free, out of the dryer, no ironing. I'll be covering more than 25,000 miles wearing these beauties. So come out and see me. I just wonder if Hager knows they're paying me by the mile. Uh-oh. Yahoo! Oh! Hager wrinkle-free cottons. 100% cotton, 0% wrinkles. They're still not wrinkled! Yeah, everybody thinks they know Troy Aikman, huh? huh. Yeah, well, I'll tell you about Troy Aikman. He's a cool customer. I mean, I remember this one time. He was surrounded by crazed linemen. I was so and I was yelling at him, Troy, run, man, run! Ha, ha, ha! No! He stayed in that pocket, threw a perfect strike, and then... Oh, man! Aikman took it! Like a man, man. Blimp, a very familiar sight over major sports events in America, here providing our aerial views today. High over, high over Cleveland, Ohio. Well, they're just trying to feel a chill here a little bit, I think. This is in Houston, but they, Warren Moon is a master playing in cold weather, and it's getting very cold now. He led Edmonton of the Canadian Football League to five straight Great Cup championships before coming to the NFL. Asked him the coldest weather he played, and he said, I'm really not sure. I didn't want to know. It was way, way below zero, though, on the chill factor. Moon pumps, looks, and a wisely, his right tackle, David Williams, ducks the ball because he's not eligible. Warren did the only thing he could do there. He sent uh, two receivers streaking down the field. He had another receiver on a medium route. Everybody was covered. And, boy, he bled the pocket for about as long as you could possibly do it without being sacked. Game Threw pretty even, Brown. Beasley, in yardage. Uh, Oilers have 248 total yards, over 100 rushing for Gary Brown. Cleveland had 226 yards total. Second down and 10 Oilers. Rob Ginn kicks in, 75,000 strong, a bad snap. Moon somehow hands it off, and Gary Brown does a great job getting back to the line of scrimmage. Gary Brown is becoming more and more in the minds of people who've watched him over the last two weeks into a serious, I mean, this oh, guy is a this serious is a... football player. And that was one of those Barry Sanders type things, you know, where you make five moves, yeah. you don't gain anything, but look at this. A spin, a juke. And, and this guy's got some stuff. He's got some major movement. He's not tall, but he's a big bag. 5'10", he's over 220. And has the great burst. Third down. The Oilers need nine. Warren Moon from the shotgun. Takes a look. Makes the throw. Diving ahead. There's a ball on the field. The Oilers recover it. It's going to be very close. We'll see if they're spotted ahead for a first down. It looks like they may have it. They do. Very simple play. Terry Taylor on the defense. And um, Hayward just goes down and stops. Inside position. You see him go to the inside position. That means he's got him all by himself. You notice he was looking at nothing but Hayward Jeffries and the man-for-man -man scheme. It's a good play by Jeffries. Tough guy to cover by yourself. Big third down reception by Hayward Jeffries, the pro bowler. And the Oilers drive on. Brown looks for a gap. He finds one. People hitting him all the way upfield, but he maintains his balance and gets ahead for a gain of seven yards, almost eight. Steve Van Moore finally brought him down. Probably the most special thing that you can say about a running back is that, you know, the first guy doesn't make the tackle. I mean, Brian, it takes two, three hits to bring Brown down. It usually takes two people tackling at once. And that equals a pretty, pretty good running back. 
Brown's defense allows only 92 yards a game rushing on the average. But Brown personally has beaten that today. He's got 120 yards already. I got some more. A second down run. Good for a first down with 2.15 to play in the third quarter. And the Oilers leading 17 to 10 over Cleveland. Eric McMillan hit him. Brown got him a coach. At the end of his play. No. He's right at the line. Yep. Jim Bates. That's, right. That's hazard. That's why they get that hazard pay. There he is. That, that's where he normally stands. <laughs> Before being propelled to the bench. <laughs> Sooner or later, even though he's not in the game, take a shot. Lou Lutz throws. Haywood Jeffries turning back at the ball, protecting with both arms. And looks like the whole city of Cleveland came and took a shot at him. That's good defense when you get that many people on the football. Remember, they did it 11 yards downfield. <laughs> First down, Oilers. First down later, they did they would do the job again today. 15 yards away from a blitz or man for man. It came in on the one hop. Incomplete. Webster Slaughter, 89, was the man going for the ball. Michael Dean Perry got pressure on Warren Moon. Gary Brown, number 33, now that you see 123 yards rushing to just 57 for the Browns. This guy's something else. I mean, he's making a talk about making the most of an opportunity. He's doing Second just that. Lorenzo, who is going to be the call in Houston? Lorenzo's probably starting to heal up pretty quick. Yeah, Lorenzo's been <laughs> troubled by some bad hamstrings, but he's been a tremendous player too for the Oilers. Gary Brown, oh, that's awesome. Pro Bowl looking back here. That's awesome. You know, it's, it's a combination yards. of it's the body lean, it's it's the weight. God and his parents and nature made him. I mean, just the way he's built. Low to the ground. Aggressive attitude. Refuses to be tackled. I mean, there's, how much more can you say about the guy? He's still running right there. Two inches from the ground, he's still pushing forward. He gets the yards, and he holds the ball. He takes a lot of hits. Continues to rush. Over 130 yards now. Right back to Gary Brown. Five yards, six yards, and that carries up to 140 for the game. And that'll do it as Bill Belichick's Cleveland defense at the moment unable to stop the onslaught of a great offensive line opening gaps for a power back in Gary Brown. So the third quarter ends with the Oilers leading and driving again. Now these words from your local station. Tonight, Darwin is kidnapped by the Regulator. Ah, ah. Now the crew must risk their lives to save him. Sequest 8, 7 Central, NBC Tonight. Where can you find the largest selection of minivans around with the lowest prices and no payments till February? Only at the minivan store, Sundance Dodge. The 94 Dodge Caravan, designed for better winter handling, just $14,987 or $2.49 a month. The minivan store has over 80 minivans to choose from, including 10 Blue Ribbon Smart Car Plymouth Grand Voyager SEs, all at one low price, just $19,888 or $3.15 a month. The minivan store, Sundance Dodge, Boise Motor. Village. Hi folks, Cindy Atwood, Boise Furniture, 5 Mile on Overland. We received a truckload of solid oak at Boise Furniture just in time for the holidays. For your dining room needs, make sure you see the huge selection at Boise Furniture. Like a four chair solid oak dinette starting at $3.99 or a solid oak table to seat 18 people. Boise Furniture has it, plus great deals on all inventory. That's Boise Furniture at 5 Mile on Overland. And remember, at Boise Furniture, if you want it, we'll help you own it. You want a great looking truck that you can show off at work, get rough in the dirt, or haul your friends to the game in. You want a truck that will last for years, and you want top dollar when you trade it in. Then you want a GMC truck. Suburbans, GMEs, extended cab pickups, regular cab pickups, and vans. You want a GMC dealership that will stand behind these GMC trucks with outstanding service and dependability. Then you want your white hat GMC truck dealers. Dennis Dillon GMC truck in Boise, and Dennis Dillon GMC truck in Ontario. Oprah, weekdays at 4 o'clock on KTVB Channel 7 in Boise.
by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the NFL is prohibited. Cleveland Stadium. 75,000 on hand as the Browns in a most important game for both teams. They both came in 5-4. and four. Cleveland trying to stem a two-game losing streak. Marley's trying to extend a four-game win streak. As Gary Brown turns it out and up, and Gary Brown has absolutely been magnificent the last two weeks. Last week they said the Bengals weren't a great defense. Well, Cleveland has a very good defense, and he's still doing it. Well, that's what I wanted to see today, and he is. Look at this. See the little move? Yeah. The guy's sneaky, elusive, and sneaky fast. You look at him, you don't you don't think of him as, as a guy with great moves and great, but he certainly has it all. I mean, this has been unreal. Any DBs on the field like that? Please, they kind of bring back memories of the good old days. And, and look at this. See, the linebackers, the big tacklers for Cleveland are on the sideline. When you play a run and shoot, you tend to play a lot of DBs, but Houston can run. I throw it when you can run every down. That time, I... Jerry Ball, who is a human bowling ball at 6 feet 315, shoots the gap and makes the stop. Well, take a look at the time of possession. Houston has taken over this football game by running the ball, good blocking on the line, and uh, Mr. Brown putting on a show. In this third quarter, Houston's run 26 plays. Cleveland has run five plays. I mean, that, that lets you know the Oilers are in the driver's seat. Looks like the Dallas Cowboys are going to go down to their third loss of the season. You'll see them Thanksgiving Day against Miami here on NBC. Beginning with NFL Live at 3.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Pacific. Warren Moon takes a look, searches out a receiver. Has some time with the run. Warren Moon heads for the 12th man on the sideline and smartly steps out of bounds, but way short of the first down. That'll bring up third down. Warren showing a little speed there. He doesn't like to turn it on anymore too too often, but uh, he turned it on there and got to the sideline. You know, you know, you can look at this and you got to thank the uh, secondary. Look at every receiver is blanketed. Every receiver is surrounded. Even with the scrambling, the DBs are hustling to stay in position. Uh oh, there was a 15-yard penalty signaled against Houston on Curtis Duncan, a personal foul. Uh-oh. So, well, he must have turned into a blocker when he saw Warren Moon running and uh, did, did a no-no. <laughs> he's had a nice day, though, Curtis oh, Duncan. a good day. Every day when he's in there, he had a foot problem. He started over 60 straight games for the Oilers, then had a foot problem that kept him out for four games this year. You know, Don, one of the difficulties of playing against a run and shoot is, like I said earlier, you tend to put six DBs in the game and one linebacker. But when the Houston Oilers have a running game, when they can establish the run like they've done the last three or four weeks, now you, you're in this quandary. Do I play more linebackers and then let them throw? Do I play more DBs and try to tackle? Tough. Big down now. Warren Moon needs that second down and 22. Here comes the rush. Swing pass, Gary Brown running an open field, crashes inside the 20. Got it back down to the 19-yard line where it'll be third down coming up, third down at about 12. Eric Turner, number 29, was the tackler for Cleveland. And Rob Burnett, one of the Browns' best defenders, is down. So while Rob Burnett is attended to, there's a break here at Cleveland. You can see these new movies at theaters and head for McDonald's Holiday Film Festival where you can pick up the original videos, The Addams Family, or Wayne's World. Just $5.99 each when you buy any large sandwich at McDonald's. Cool. Also available, the children's classic Charlotte's Web, or Ghost. Just $5.99 each when you buy any large sandwich. I was not aware of that. But hurry, because they'll be gone in a snap. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. You've heard of store cars, gas... It will silently kill 2,000 unsuspecting people this year. It's an odorless, colorless, poisonous gas, and it could be stalking your home. It's carbon monoxide. New Center 7's Project CO can help keep your family safe with this simple detector and an informational pamphlet available at any Treasure Valley Tune Tech location and KTVB. I'm Gretchen Anderson. Join photographer Dan Goykachia and me and learn how to safeguard your home from the poison. That's Project CO, Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on Channel 7, Idaho's news channel. 
by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. By the American gas industry, gas, America's best energy value. And by Oldsmobile. There's Rob Barnett. He's the guy who hurt his leg, but he's okay. Bouncing around, he'll probably go back in. Anthony Pleasant, number 98, will be his replacement. Pleasant moves all around that line. Four and a half sacks already this season. He can play both uh, in positions. He'll step in now for Burnett. Oilers with 157 yards rushing. Ernest Gibbons has rushed for two yards. And Gary Brown has rushed for 155. This guy's going to go over what he did last week. Just uh, it's amazing. Of course, last week he missed. He sat out most of the fourth quarter. All of the fourth quarter. So big was the Oilers' lead over the Bengals. Third down, Houston needs 12, and Warren Moon wants to discuss this thing with his coaches. It is a doubleheader day on NBC Sports. Coming up next on most of these stations, the Denver Broncos take the home field at mile high to go against the Pittsburgh Steelers, the current leader in the AFC Central. Or you may see the Raiders go against the Chargers at San Diego. Warren Moon has got um, 171 yards passing so far today. This is a, a big toss for him coming up, third and 12. One touchdown, two interceptions. He's 18 of 34. He's had some, some brilliant plays and a, and a couple of moon shots. There's the AFC Central at the outset of the day. The Cleveland Browns, who's began with a season of promise a five and two start they were three and oh then five and two now two straight losses and four defeats in their last six looking to turn it around today a win would get Cleveland perhaps into a first place tie or the Oilers if they win could very well be tied for first if Denver beats Pittsburgh but that takes some doing third down they go to the draw play and Gary Brown breaks it right up the middle inside the five and down to the four yard line he got first down so the Browns coming in an all-out pass rush, and they send Gary Brown up the middle on a draw, 15 yards. That's a great call by the offense here. I mean, everybody's thinking pass. They're piling on on the inside, full blitz, and Brown, look at him, shaking and baking at 2.30. This guy, Beasley, if he keeps going, we're not going to send him to the throw ball. We're going to send him to Kent straight. 672 yards and 25 carries. All he needs to do here is score now. Almost seven yards of carry. Warren Moon finds trouble and makes the best of it and goes in. That looked like a broken play. Yeah, I think that was a busted play. But Warren will take it. Warren went uh, left and uh, Brown went right. And Warren did what every quarterback is supposed to do, run the ball through the hole that was intended uh, for the play to go through. Ran that tough, too. So Coach Belichick's Brown's up against it now, but there is a lot of time left. 12.30 to play. See, look, he's, he's looking for, looking for Brown. Looking. <laughs> so Brown finally makes a mistake. And then Warren puts his head down and barely yeah, gets the ball over the line. But he's got white chalk all over the ball, so all it was on the line. Absolutely. Now Del Greco on the point after try. Powers it up and good. And the Cleveland Browns, who at one point trailed 3-0, now lead 24-10. Back at Cleveland Stadium, 12 minutes and 30 seconds left to play. The only thing that's going to turn around the anti-Belichick sentiment is a win. And right now, Art Modell and his Browns, he sees them down by 14 points with 12.30 to go. Belichick really doesn't have an offensive coordinator, does he, Beat? It's kind of a group decision. Yeah, it's a, you know, he puts, he takes some input, but uh, he makes the final decision going in, and that's been a source of a lot of controversy uh, here in town, but uh, Bill, secure and confident and a little stubborn in he his sucks. decision. <laughs> Somebody had a, the bed sheet business was good in Cleveland this week. <laughs> Baldwin Brown downs the ball in the end zone, and Cleveland will have the long field to go. They'll start with the ball first and 10 after 20. Well, Cleveland needs to make something happen here. I mean, this is uh, it's an obvious statement, but here, here's what I would look at. 
I would look at uh, Phil Cox trying to hit number 81 Jackson and a look back at the last touchdown there's Warren Moon is running back with the wrong way and the 37 year old as of Thursday happy birthday drops his head and drives it in like a 25 year old Had a broken play but he knew where to go and there's nobody to give it to right to that touchdown line. Childress makes an all-pro play. Brown's trying to go to the bag of tricks, and there's nothing happening. The Oiler coaches all singled out number 21 on Cleveland. Eric Metcalf, who's just come into the game, is the guy they had to stop, and he has just two receptions for 17 yards. No rushes in the game. Bill Cox is a, a very good play faker. Just at that time, Big Childress had so much penetration that he ran right into the play, ran right into Carroll. Got the stallions up front, Houston Oilers. Downfield throw, boom, Kinchin gets it, and he's struck hard by the free safety, Marcus Robertson. Now that ball on the other side of Kitchen, and it's a reception. I mean, this is just a ball that's thrown on the wrong side of the athlete. Phil Cox has the opportunity to step and throw, throw it on the other side. It's a completion. See, the good quarterbacks throw it away from the defender. Give the guy a chance to catch it without taking his head off. But he's got to keep throwing. Down by 14, even with 11.34 left to play. Here in the fourth quarter, the Browns are working into the wind for the most part. Wind is swirling. It seems to have died down a bit. They getting colder, though. It's probably in the high 30s now. Here's a throw in addition with a beautiful play. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Don, why go there? Why go additional yeah, you don't when Jackson it. has been having so much trouble? It's a wonder Dishman didn't catch that and, and moonwalk into the uh, end zone. to put it from their end zone. And you know what the others are going to do? Send Gary Brown at you to eat up clock. Oh, boy. Atlanta beating Dallas 27 to 7 in the fourth quarter. Falcons were a huge underdog on their home field. Uh oh, watch. Look at this. Look at this. Running with the ball is Del Spear, a rookie. And he's to the 16-yard line, but that's not nearly enough. And the ball turns over to Houston. Bubba McDowell, number 25, made the block. Well, Bubba's done what he's supposed to do today. He told us that he's, you know, he's a guy that's put in position to make plays. And he has risen to the occasion. That's a picture-perfect block. Two hands out right on the ball. blues and screaming yellows in sounds that shake you to the bottom of your heart in images clear as crystal and brilliant as ice in faraway worlds as close as your fingertips these are what dreams and Sony Trinitron televisions are made of make one come true for you it's your life isn't it worth a Sony Nissan advertises their Ultima as starting under 14,000 yeah, but unlike the Oldsmobile Achieva Special Edition, that price doesn't include air, automatic, anti-lock brakes, AM, FM stereo, and floor mats. Things that can make an Ultima finish just under 18 grand. The Achieva Special Edition, with all that and more, is only $13,995. Well, you could always split it with me. It's your money. sent Bill Belichick's team against the ropes, blocking a punt, and now the Oilers take over the ball, first and 10 at the 17-yard line of Cleveland. The Oilers looking to get five straight wins for the first time in 13 years. They put the knockout punch on now if they haven't already. There's the guy that can do it. Gary Brown turns it up and out. The 
Oilers have owned the second half easily. I mean, the time of possession is, is staggering. It's like a it's like a left hook. Houston's had the ball 15 minutes, over 15 minutes for 33 plays, and look at what Cleveland has done. Houston simply took over, took over this football game. Brown, Gary Brown now at 177 yards rushing on 26 carries. And a touchdown. I'll leave out his touchdown. The man can do it. End zone throw. Too much on it. He was going for Haywood Jeffries. Overthrown. That brings up third down and five. There's Hayward Jeffries just going straight up on a streak on the side. He's a tall kid. They try to put it up high, and uh, Terry Taylor in good position. Uh, nothing they could do about that one. Gary Brown's outrushed Warren Moon's passing. They both have a lot. Brown 177 yards rushing, Moon 171 passing. zone again a long throw and too much on it for Haywood Jeffrey and that sends out El Del Greco so the Oilers unable to convert for a touchdown off the block punt so they do have a field goal try very makeable for El Del Greco who's been one of the best a huge game coming up for the Steelers next Sunday at the Astrodome the Steelers come to Houston now that's going to be a football game yeah that will be <laughs> that those Steelers you know, I, you, good. you hear a noise around that Three River Stats. People jumping on the bandwagon, baby. Tell you what, those people in Houston ought to start jumping on because this is the best team in the American Conference, I think. Field goal is good. Next Saturday, a terrific college event, the Bayou Classic, comes up on NBC Sports from the Superdome in New Orleans. The great Eddie Robinson, the winningest football coach in history. Anytime, anywhere, any level, Eddie Robinson leads the Grambling Tigers against the Jaguars of Southern University. That is next Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, the Bayou Classic here on NBC Sports. I'll tell you one thing, Eddie Robinson, I guess, is into his 70s now, but he's one of the best-looking 70s Two plus years. I've ever seen. He's going <laughs> to energetic man. Until he's 90. <laughs> The kickoff comes downfield. Hilliard runs it back for Cleveland. Our Baldwin takes it back to the 21-yard line. And he is knocked out of the 21-yard line. A gain of 18 yards on the play. Todd Philcox comes back out. The 6-foot-4-inch, 225-pounder from Syracuse University. There's the new home of the Cleveland Indians. Downtown Cleveland. This will open up for next season and they'll be packing with a lot of people and right nearby is a new basketball arena where the Cavaliers will hold for it. It's a beautiful state. Hey, I don't know who's responsible but somebody's done some job at oh. downtown Cleveland over the last 10 years. It's like another place. Very terrific city to visit. Here is uh, Phil Cox firing downfield to Kinchin. He's upended, loses the ball, is picked up by a teammate. He's flattened. My goodness. It, the hits keep coming here, BZ. Yeah, they do. They are tossing their bodies around. Well, that was a super throw by Phil Cox. Good catch. A good hit. <laughs> They're throwing the bodies around. This is a huge game for both teams. And, well, the Browns have got to do something to get back in it. Watch Phil Cox here. He'll make a serious check to the right. There it is. Didn't like it. Come back to the left and just nail Kitchen right on the button. Tell you what, that was a fumble. That was a fumble, so uh, the DBs had a right to come in there and hit. Kitchen takes the ball, the tight end, lunges ahead. First I'll play good for nine. While the Oilers will be home next week, the Astrodome to play the Steelers. The Browns head south. They'll be going to the site of the next Super Bowl, Atlanta, Georgia. They'll be going against the Falcons, and all of a sudden that becomes a lot tougher game. The Falcons laying it to the Dallas Cowboys today. Second down and one. There's the rest of the Oilers schedule. They too have Atlanta coming up. That's on the following week. Straight ahead give and Wilbur Marshall fills the hole quickly and knocks down Tommy Vardell. Second and short. There's no gain. It'll be third down two. 
You know, when you look at uh, how tough the Oilers uh, have to go, I mean, it's going to be a tough go here. Pittsburgh twice, then San Francisco. Everybody knows what the Jets are doing now. Cleveland is no slouch. So, I tell you, Houston's got to play the way they're playing. They plan to really make some noise. Kitchen, one hands the ball takes it down to the 35 yard line. Ryan Kinchin from LSU working more and more into the offense now as the game wears on going to some underneath stuff for a game. Kitchen's got four catches for 61 yards already. He is becoming a target. That's a super catch there. There are always people open when you're playing against the Buddy Ryan team. What he tries to do is uh, give you this helter skelter uh, emergency exigent feeling by applying a lot of pressure now he's going to start blitzing now he doesn't wait very long he's at that point in the field now where he'll start letting it go oh buddy will be sending somebody here in a minute to blitz there it comes Hillcock takes a drop though they pick it up downfield throw a tip ball off the hands of Michael Jackson that brings up second down and 10 for the Browns you know, when a quarterback is just a little bit off, everything goes a bit high. And almost everything Kitchen, even the one-handed catch by Kitchen was a high ball. He had to reach up with one hand and catch it. Here, Michael, as tall as Jackson is, Michael is 6'4". He can't bring that one down. When the quarterback is off, it's usually a little, little high. The ball is high. That, that can also get you killed. Yeah, stretching out those receivers. <laughs> Bill Cox thrown a lot, 15 of 35. Limited starting time. He had a great game last year when he beat the Raiders. A near perfect performance. Here is a throw downfield, and it's taken in by Michael Jackson. The Browns drive on. Reception made at the 25-yard line, right where he had to go for a first down, and it looks like Mike Jackson has been shaken up. Now, that was a perfect blitz pickup by... Uh, Phil Cox, he saw everybody coming. Once again, the ball a little high, but really can't blame him this time. Look at everybody. Wilbur Marshall coming straight up the gut. Phil Cox just did a good job to get rid of that ball. So you can't complain about that one being a little high. And here's a courageous catch. And a good hit by Young Jackson. We'd like to show you our new Achieva Special Edition. Well, for starters, it's got an airbag, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, air conditioning, automatic transmission, AM-FM stereo, power door locks. Sure, but that's where the really special part comes in. It's your money. switch to natural gas. Clean, economical, natural gas. Think what we'll save. Now the movie America fell in love with can be yours during McDonald's Holiday Film Festival. Take home the smash romantic hit Ghost for just $5.99 when you buy any large sandwich. Or treat your family to the children's classic Charlotte's Web. Isn't it great? Just $5.99 when you buy any large sandwich. You can see these new movies at theaters and own the originals. But hurry to McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Monday, Will's bribing his teacher to get good grades. Behold, my chictionary. One problem. Teach wants mm -hmm. Hillary. I was just so struck by your beauty. Well, duh. Then Sex and Blossom share a secret. I'll be there for you. And Joey hosts the Tonight Show and gets lucky. Go out with me. Whoa. With guest Tori Spelling, all new NBC. Monday. Michael Jackson was on the field when we last left Cleveland Stadium for that break after making a nice reception for a first down. But Michael's up. He's all right. Taking a play off, and the Browns drive on. If they need big plays, 7.37 to play in the game, and the clock is running. And the Oilers holding to a 27-10 lead. Metcalf, he's been held down. That's him in motion, 21. Here's a throw. Beautiful play. And Carrier goes in for a touchdown. A 
34-yard touchdown throw. So the Browns strike quickly and inch back into the game with still 7-18 to play. Carrier with seven receptions for 123 yards and that touchdown. Hey, Don, that was almost surgical in nature. It was a perfect throw, a perfect pattern. And when the quarterback and the wide receiver on the same page, it is almost like, I mean, it happens so quickly that the defense cannot react. Carrier can fly. Phil Cox, for once, put it right on the money. Matt Stover hits the extra point. Up and good. And now, Phil Cox... And the Browns down by 10, and now it's up to the Cleveland defense to try to get a stop of the Houston offense and get the ball back. It's a three-step drop, one, two, three, let it go, and I mean he threw a bomb in there. Bubba McDowell fell, fell down to help the play, but Mark Carrier and the quarterback Todd Philcox were on the same thing. Watch this, three steps and burst on the inside. How about that for a pass? He didn't have to jump, he didn't have to move. The ball simply met him. The ball met him at an intersection. <laughs> and that's, that's what it's all about when it's working right, boy, and the defense has no chance of reacting. The Oilers have that time-consuming runner, though, Gary Brown, who not only grinds out the yards, he eats up clock. He's been the guy, and he's going to be getting the ball a lot in this next drive. Browns have to try to force a three-play and out. And force the Oilers to punt the ball with seven minutes and 18 seconds left to play. Stover ready to kick off. It is now turning into a very cold day in northern Ohio on the shores of Lake Erie. But we have an onside kick try. The Oilers are certainly positioned for one. They got the hands team up front. Little wedge shot. Billy Drury across the 20 and holding on to the ball. He gets to the 23. It's a doubleheader day on NBC Sports. Most of you will see the Pittsburgh Steelers go against the Denver Broncos at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Some will see the, Raider, the Raiders take on the San Diego Chargers at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. Check your local listings for the game in your area. We have a long way to go in this game as Warren Moon on the Houston offense comes back out. There's a holding call on the return. That'll set the Oilers back, so holding they have the long field to the go. Receiving team during the return. 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. There's a big break for um, for Cleveland, and somebody's got to make a play. For the Browns to get back in this game, somebody's got to make a play, and they've got to make it quickly. See, the problem is they cannot let Mr. Brown, and that's what they're calling. And believe me, the Cleveland players are calling him Mr. Brown now. They can't let him just drag them three, four yards apart. <laughs> his second year from Penn State Gary Brown he's the man and they're reading him all the way and this time they shut him right down Miami has defeated New England by just four points as the Patriots continue to lose week after week in the closest of games Well, the numbers tell it all right there. 91 and 92 combined for Mr. Brown, 172. Now look what he's done the last two weeks. <laughs> he has come of age, I believe. Oh, he has come of age. <laughs> and he is aging that defense, everyone he plays against. You get old trying to stop this guy. Moon off target. Duncan was running a hitch and go, and Moon was looking for the out pattern. So it comes to third down and nine now. That's one of the difficulties of the Houston offense of the run and shoot. It's, a, it's an offense that is in flux. So the quarterback and the wide receiver have to see and read and make the same adjustment. That time, Moon and Duncan on the wrong on separate pages. One thinking long, one thinking short. And importantly for Cleveland Beasley, the incomplete pass stopping the clock. 6.27 still to be played. Four wide receivers set. Remember that draw he ran to Gary Brown. This time he's going to throw it. Here comes the rush. There's the throw. It's caught for a first down. 
Haywood Jeffries coming off the left flank, running a post pattern over the middle, and Warren Moon right on his numbers for 21 yards and a first down on a third and nine play. See, the Houston Oilers have big play people. They have people that make plays when it's time. Look at Jeffries with a nice smooth pattern on the inside and his quarterback Warren Moon right on the money. And Coach Belichick sits and doesn't make too much of an adjustment. You see the people behind him jumping up and down. But Major upset really Beasley at Kansas City. The Bears have just upset the Chiefs 1917. This is some day in football. Yeah. It's some weekend. Gary Brown on first down runs the ball and runs the clock, which is ticking down to 535 to play. James Jones and Stephon Moore, the tacklers. Well, it's time for the offensive line to step up for the Houston Oilers and Mr. Gary Brown. If they give him a crack, they give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Gary Brown said one year at Penn State he was a running back. The next year he was a strong safety. The next year he was a running back again, but he was behind Leroy Thompson, who's playing so well for the Steelers now. So he never got to play much, but they liked him in the combines and used an eighth round draft choice to get him. What a pick. Emily Marker comes in from the linesman as James Jones wrestles down the ball carrier, Gary Brown. Tackle by James Jones. I'll tell you, that was an interesting. Uh, the wide receivers may have. Illegal motion. Illegal motion. I thought it was in the wide receiving core moving uh, illegally. We'll find out. Maybe it's in the line. Wind gusting up in off the lake. The ball will be set back on the penalty as the Browns look for the mark. Back to, uh, close to the 35 yard line. A one of the offensive players is going off the field. David the Williams shaking up. Looks to be all right. Snap. He just limped off when he turned his ankle. Line. Third down. We're at Cleveland Stadium. Don Cricky with Beasley Reese. 75,000 looking for the Browns to come out of their losing streak. But they're down 10 points to the Oilers now in the fourth quarter. Five minutes to play. Houston looking for its first five game win streak in 13 years. Warren Moon stands in. Evades the rush and wisely throws the ball away but it was on third down and the Oilers have to punt the ball. Well we've had a couple of instances today where the Cleveland Browns have simply covered up everybody. The secondary on this team is pretty good. And here's the most dangerous man on the football field. Eric Metcalf can do. He's done it. He has done it. He can do. They better cover this punt, buddy. This is the man who personally beat the Pittsburgh Steelers on this field. Montgomery doesn't want to give him a run back. He angles it for the sidelines and kicks it out of bounds at the 30. They're very wary of Metcalf. They're not going to fool with him. You no, know, the coaches told us in their meetings yesterday yep. that they were going to kick it out of bounds, sideways, whatever right. they had to do. Look at Metcalf yelling down at him, the former <laughs> Texas Longhorn. Talk about an athlete. His best long jump, the U.S. champion, was 27-8. Coming up next, the Steelers and the Broncos on most of these NBC stations on a doubleheader day. The Raiders also against the, go against the Chargers at San Diego. But right now, the Browns have the ball. 4.48 left to play in the game. And Cleveland down 27 to 10. And the last time they got the ball, scoring on a touchdown pass. Now down by 10 points. They'll be throwing. Bill Cox with a quick drop. Here's a blitz. He just gets it away and he makes the connection. Patrick Rowe, number 86, makes his first play of the day and it's good for a first down. Todd Philcox is starting to make some plays. I mean, he's starting to recognize blitzes. He's turning, he's throwing with his yeah. entire body with confidence and hitting people on the money. I mean, this guy is starting, he's stepping up. One of the things he does well, Beasley, he sets up fast. He's yes. quick. Yes. He's big, 6'4", 225, but he's ready to throw. Here is a stretched out reception. It's good for a catch. A super catch. Somehow, the Browns make the play again as Michael Jackson goes up after the ball and comes out with it. A nine-yard gain. Jackson still holding his back. 
uh, a result of the last hit that he took at the top of your screen. You see him limping into position number 81. Hanging on to that lower back and still trying to run. Just made a great play in paint. There's a throw and a catch. A stunning hit, but the ball is held. Michael Jackson again makes the play, and again the Cleveland Browns have a first down. Because all of a sudden, Todd Philcox is looking like the guy they'd hoped he'd be. Well, it takes a lot of courage to catch this ball. He just caught a ball and got nailed with man. Jackson and Philcox stepping up. Over the middle throw against a big rush. Glenn Montgomery was coming hard, and Philcox had to release the ball to save getting sacked. Incomplete pass. That stops the clock with 323 to play. Green Bay has defeated Detroit 26 to 17. Here's a great throw. I mean, I'm telling you, this guy steps, surveys, and look at the catch. Bill Cox has some impressive numbers now. He's hit 20 of 41 for 288 yards and two touchdowns. He was intercepted twice, but that was early in the game. Here comes the rush. Phil Cox pumps, lets it go deep. It's picked off by Marcus Robertson. The Oilers intercept with 3.16 to play. Robertson, so this drive is stopped. You know, that happens a lot on the pump fake. If you're a great safety, when you see that quarterback pump one time, you take off running full speed. You know it's going deep. You know it's going deep. <laughs> they don't pump you and throw a quick out. <laughs> they pump fake the quick out. They pump fake the curl and go big. Now, the pump comes off right there. Now, he's pumping on the curl. And so, as a, as a great safety, you're flying. You catch it like a punt if you're any good. I don't know if I'd be fooling with that dishman thrown over his way. No, I wouldn't be fooling with the dish either. See the pump? Yep, yeah, you got it. You when they pump, you got to be going. See, you throw on the ball in the National Football League, you're, you're too late. You have to throw on the intent to throw. The pump, you go. That's what they say when you're looking at the little number, you're in trouble if you're a defensive back. The number on the back of the jersey is smaller than the one in the front. I didn't see too many of those little ones. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Jones. Tonight, don't miss an all-star all around the world spectacular on NBC. It's Disney's Countdown to Kids Day, followed by an all-new Sequest adventure starring Roy Scheider. Then it's an NBC world premiere movie on the surface. They were the All-American family. Behind closed doors, their true story will shock you. Neil Patrick Harris and Roseanne's Johnny Galecki star in a family torn apart. That's all tonight on NBC. The lights are on, and the Oilers are looking to run out the clock if they can. In the first quarter of San Diego, Chargers and the Raiders are scoreless right now. Some of you will be going to that game. Others will see, and most of you will see the Steelers go against the Broncos. They, too, are underway now, and there's no score early in that first quarter. for him all the way. He doesn't get much as the Browns look to force a punt if they can. Browns quickly call a timeout with 3.02 to play. We'll be back to Cleveland Stadium in a moment. Gary Brown of the Houston Oilers approaching a 200-yard rushing day, up to 189 now. And the Tyler Rose was the last Oiler to get it over 200 13 years ago in the December day. And he rushed for 203 yards. Third down coming up now for Warren Moon and the Oilers. They need six. Timing throw downfield, incomplete, and the Oilers have to punt. Haywood Jeffries was the intended receiver who wasn't close to a connection. That's the play that they run all the time. It's where Hayward just goes down the sideline and then sets down. Here's the most dangerous man once again, and I'm. And let me say this: there's no way they kick to this guy. I mean, we saw it last time. They're going to line drive it. They told us in the meetings 
that they'd rather take a first and ten from the sideline than to kick the ball to Eric Metcalf, especially in the middle of the field. Montgomery steps into it. Now he booms it end over end. Metcalf's going to get a play on this one. Runs out of room and finds him and gets back to the 43-yard line of Houston. A 36-yard punt and a seven-yard return. Well, they gambled and got away with it. I think the reason they did, Beasley, is Metcalf came way up on it. If they were going to try that short sideline kick again, he was in position to possibly catch it on the run. So, so they kick straight down. Tell you, you can see how dangerous he is right there. That's a hit, and he backs up. They're very lucky there. On October 24th of the stadium, he returned one punt, 91 yards for a touchdown against the Steelers. He turned it. Returned another 75 yards for a touchdown. Statistically, the Steelers really dominated that day, but Metcalf personally beat him. Bill Cox throws, and Kitchen makes the reception. He's down to the 30 yard line. A 12 yard gain on the play. Two minutes and 37 seconds to play in the game. Todd Philcox doesn't have a lot of game experience. He is really maturing before our eyes. I mean, down the stretch, under pressure, under duress, he's making some good throws. Again, Phil Cox sets up. Again, he has time, and Kitchen is there. It's intercepted again. A tip ball on the run of the Houston Oilers. Marcus Robertson's going to be ruled down. Robertson picks off another. That was a, you really can't fault anybody on that. It was a great play by Robertson as the ball skipped off Kitchen's fingertips, and Marcus Robertson from Iowa State makes a tremendous diving play. Back-to-back -back interceptions. Uh, you can't ask for any better than that. And really, like you said, you can't fault uh, Todd Philcox. He puts the ball there. The bounce and the quick hand and eye coordination of the defensive back. Watch this. That's why he's a pro. That's uh, that's quickness. That is real quickness. And again, the Browns are stopped. So late in the game, Philcox has been in sync. These interceptions have stopped drives as he's up to 300 yards passing for the day. But as you see, has been picked off four times. So he has eight turnovers in the two games he started. He had two interceptions and two fumbles against Seattle and the four pickoffs today. Gary Brown. Browns go hunting the ball, trying to punch it free. They can't do it. As we now come down to the two-minute warning at Cleveland Stadium, and the Oilers continue to lead the game. There's another great Brown who runs the football in the NFL. In addition to the rising Gary Brown, there's Jim Brown, who some regard as the greatest ever. But well, in my mind, he's the greatest ever. <laughs> That's the man right there. Five yards a carry for his career, and the whole world knew he was going to carry it. That's right. 12,000 yards in nine years, and he was playing in 12 games. That's seasons. right. That's, That's the big stat that people forget about. The guys playing 16 games now. And Trying to compare their numbers to the man. I don't think so. He said, How can you retire now? He said, Well, you retired for nine years now. So, with this kind of money, it's awful tough to say goodbye. Gary Brown is weaving and turning and winding his way, and that will be another timeout on the field. This will be back to Houston. Or to Cleveland. Cleveland Stadium, Don Cricky with Beasley Reese. You have to look at this Houston Oilers team, which has been known in recent years for fast starts and then collapses as a genuine Super Bowl contender. I think it's the best team in the American Conference. We've seen them all. Well, it is one of the best. I, I'm not ready to give them the best yet, but you know, I'm still looking at Pittsburgh and, and looking at what they do. But still, Houston, I think you have to be proud of what they've accomplished. They're coming up against a real tough part of their schedule. Yeah, this will so tell the story. I, this will tell it. Over the next few weeks, we'll find out who's playing. Back to the run they go. The Browns are reading Gary Brown all the way. And again, three straight times now. It's been three downs and out for the Houston offense as they try to run out the clock. So they're going to have to punt it back to Cleveland again. And it'll be Phil Cox throwing right down to the gun. But they need a touchdown and a field goal to just tie the game down by 10. Well, here's the Metcalf factor again. Once again, I wouldn't kick to him. The defense has been making the plays and making the turnovers. I kick it to the sideline and or at least I'd make this guy run a mile to field the ball. Yeah. Well, he tried to hit it, but it's kind of a shank. Yeah. Well, he tried.
tried to. He, he can hear me. He's trying to do what I'm telling him to do. Yeah, he was <laughs> Now let's look at the Hager Wrinkle Free Cotton Super Play of the Game. And of course, if you've been watching this game, you know that it's all about Mr. Brown. Goes in, gets hit by Michael Dean, sucks in the entire Cleveland Brown team, spins off, and runs a beautiful touchdown. This man has put on a show today. Every week, two starts, two superlative performances. And now let's see what Cleveland can do with 113 left in the game. And the Browns setting to go on offense. First and 10 at the Oiler 39 yard line. Cleveland led off the scoring today. Scored on a Stover field goal to take a 3 0 lead. Then the Oilers came back with two touchdowns. They led 14 3. It was 14 10 at the half. Oilers extended their lead to 27 10. It's now 27 17 with Bill Cox throwing to the end. He goes downfield. Patrick Rowe has it. And he's down to the 23 yard line. Phil Cox has been impressive in this emergency situation. He's really been good. Yeah, he, he, he looks strong. His confidence level is definitely coming up. And he throws. Oops. Incomplete. That will stop the clock with 52 seconds to play. And you know, it's not like uh, Houston is playing a prevent defense either. They're playing man for man coverage. And, you know, Buddy Ryan is not one of those guys that just backs off and says, we've got a, a big lead. We'll let you march down the field. They are blitzing the guy. They're playing man for man. They're doubling uh, the inside guys. And he is still, Phil Cox, still putting it on the money. Buddy Ryan's defense has really stopped the run. They've allowed the Browns only 49 yards rushing, but Phil Cox has thrown now for 303 yards. Four wide receivers going deep. He takes a look. Tucks it downfield, and it comes in short. Incomplete, and that'll bring up third down at the 23-yard line. Of course, with 47 seconds left and down by 10, we're looking at four, four downs of passing. Two more to come. The guys uh, under duress. I mean, this Houston team has done a great job. They have never quit rushing. Look at him. Childress, Jones, Sean Jones coming in with a big hit in his head there. Fuller on the other side. These guys are bringing it. They know he has to throw. Bill Cox numbers, two touchdowns, four interceptions. Oilers turned it over four times in the first half, early in the first half, then they settle down. Here's Phil Cox, and they get him. He's knocked down at the 27-yard line. Ray Childress with another big play. So fourth down arises, and Phil Cox looks to be going to the uh, end zone. Now they're going to send out the field goal unit. They need 10 points, so doesn't matter how they get it. Three first, seven later, or seven first and three later. Doesn't matter. Side kick. The thinking here is the field goal, which was good, makes it a 27 to 20 game. And now the Browns will try an onside kick with 23 seconds left, hoping they get the ball and can get a desperation pass into the end zone and tie the game. This is an exciting part of the football game. <laughs> well, you get people diving in. Now the U the um, Houston Oilers will put out there what they call their hands team. They'll have every receiver. Every tight end, every defensive back, anybody with good hands will be lined up on the kickoff return team. It'll, all, it'll be all the little guys, none of the big guys. Running backs, second and third team running backs and receivers, all of those people will man the kickoff return team now, expecting the onside kick. Jack Pardee looking on nervously. The Browns are out of timeouts. Webb Slaughter goes on the field. He certainly has the good hands. That's right. You know he's not a kickoff return blocker, but he's right on the front line. There's Ernest Gibbons on the front line. These guys will have a wave of Browns coming at them, and their job is to concentrate, to have the, the coolness, the reserve, to gather in the ball and take the blows from these big, big rushers for the Browns who will be trying to knock it free. Here we go. Down to the right side, maybe. Here we go. He's going to bounce it. Watch it. They work on this. It's amazing, these kickers. Here we go. He bounces it down the field. Look at that play. What a nice scoop of the ball by an oiler. Who was that that came? That was Scott Kozak, a linebacker from Wisconsin. Made a tremendous play, and that really, in effect, ends the game since the Browns have no timeouts remaining. Well, you know, sometimes it's the bounce of the ball, and what it comes down to. 
Watch this. It'll bounce right perfectly where the guy can catch it and cradle it. He caught that at about the eight. And the ball is supposed to go 10 for the kicking team to be able to recover it. Denver has taken a 3 nothing lead on Cleveland. Or excuse me, on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right now with uh, 22 seconds left to go. The Houston Oilers have the ball positioned at the 43-yard line of the Browns. The Oilers looking to up their record now to six and four. This after a one and four start. The knockout punch in that playoff game in Buffalo when they're up by 35 and lost the lead, and then followed up by a disastrous start. All the pressure was on the Oilers. The critics were many and very vocal, but the Oilers stuck together and they have come back big time. As they win again, they win their fifth straight game for the first time in 13 years. And they are a team to be reckoned with as Coach Belichick, with strong security, leaves the field as a loser with the Cleveland Browns. The Browns have now dropped five of their last seven. Now for Beasley Reese, this is Don Cricky. Glad you could be with us in Cleveland, Ohio, where the Oilers are a victor 27 to 20.